Hello, uh, my name is David Khan, and this message I just I'm just leaving out and speaking out after all the retaliation and unjust and disgusting things that have been happening in our life and the, you know above from it come from the law enforcement or police. The, it is the, about the Daily City Police Department and the Child Protective Service. What they did was really, really, really unethical and inhumane. I was assaulted. I had my uh, ribs got hairline fracture. The doctor said maybe it was really painful. About two weeks, I couldn't breathe. This side and this side is different now. It's different. It used to be different. I mean, I can feel it. So I had that, and then I have my both of my leg fracture and accident. I'm still on physical therapy, and the cops use extra force. Whatever they did not even have proper cause, but they arrested me with force, the use of force as usual. Boom, go on. And that one injury. Now I'm back with my glasses. Without this. My right eye is really blurry. And now, right now, they have been separated. My family, my wife and child, they separated us and then made from me. And then there were like a lot of monkey business going on in the middle because of the civil suit that I filed at the federal court. And the case started is like but the police, they're acting like they are really nice people. They are really grateful and trying to, you know, do something for you or like that way they act because. My wife, she had never been dealt with like these police or anything like that before in her life. And, and like this event happened and she just easily manipulated. Those guys talk sweet to her and just you know, making her think that they are real. And now they're telling that my wife that she cannot contact her is against the law. But I found out today, I was looking at the court records, found out there were third party application for the restraining order, family restraining order on 28th. And I found that happened after I spoke to the uh, Child Protective Service social worker. I told them, you know, this is going on. Why you guys are telling my wife that she cannot contact me, she, I cannot see my child for this long, you know, because of you guys, uh, the, the, even the court is not preventing me. And that trigger them to file that because it's coming on to them. They are the one telling my wife not to contact me and putting her in the hotel because, and I'll explain from the beginning, how these nasty thing comes up. And the worst thing is, the police department, they find restraining order against me as gun widened because they seized two guns from me, one 1938 Mosin uh, the Soviet Union, Era and one handgun, and they said it's high capacity, whatever that is high capacity. That doesn't matter because it is not, uh, it is not like going to shoot somebody or anything. The police had a 21 round cat, you know, to a magazine and everything. I have that one, we bought it a long time ago. We owned, I had it before any capacity, whatever. And then there were Freedom Week, a lot of things go on. So, you know, at the time, a lot of people get whatever they need to, you know, because I'm at home, I have to defend myself. Any, any invasion or home intrusion happen. My house, from my room to my bedroom, it takes 10 seconds. The police cannot get here in less than 5 seconds to stop them. I call 911, they will ask me the information, the address. I'm already dead before I answer. I cannot risk my family with that. So, long story short, the police just said that I cannot contact the police. The police cannot contact me, which means you have to stay away from me. It doesn't make sense, the police department. So I wish me, even though whatever happened to me, I cannot contact them. The police cannot pull me over. None of the police department can pull me over on the street. That happened after, the day after I sent them the uh, public record request. That they came to my house and arrested me with forceful en ent entry, and there was no warrant, there was no probable cause. It's retaliation. Everything came from retaliation. So, this is the fair or not 
prejudices or is there anything fair or if they are doing the right thing. If you are doing the right thing, the CPS said we are trying to reunite the family. You are not trying to reunite the family. You are breaking the family as much as possible so you guys can keep the job that paying $200,000 a year and each child the government suppose you got $250,000 a year. It's about business. You guys don't care about the children. You don't care about the family. All you care about is your retirement and your job security. So I have a, uh, the base of this, the original starting of this case is, sorry, I'm just a little bit, you know, what we call, uh, emotionally and then frustration. So I'm a stutter. And that started in 2016, I was arrested by Penal PD, Penal Police Department. And the person who arrested me was hailed as a hero for tackling a 46 years old woman at the Hawaiian airport, Justin Rogers. Now he's a surgeon. And recently bought a house in Napa. So that guy, when we, when we caught the person who stole our property uh, over, over 100, hundred thousand dollars worth caught with the stolen property so the the cop talked with the guy for about 45 minutes inside the apartment I was wondering what the heck are they doing you know he came back out arrested me said child cruelty you are under arrest for child cruelty if I got if I find any more in the hard drive you will never get out of jail and I was said with three hundred twenty thousand dollar bail my wife, my child was uh, detained for a few times in the, in, the, in the car and they hold the, uh, the car key. They were held, holding on to my wife's driver's license and they said we did not detain them. So my wife doesn't speak English well. She doesn't know what the heck she's doing. And things got, she doesn't, she was like, whatever the police said, oh yes, it is whatever. She did not even understand everything. And go on. So I was uh, held for five days. Because to post a bail, it is you need uh, property ownership. So I couldn't post bail. I had to stay five days, no charges filed, no criminal complaint, nothing. Because the cops, they know they screw up. They cannot find any any complaint that they're gonna set up. So I was released, no charges. The county jail just said go five days. I was held. Supposed to be twenty four hours. California law is not seventy two hours. There's no forty eight hours. If it is Saturday. 48 hours because month, Sundays there's no court. So 24 hours, 48 hours, doesn't matter. It's like five days and then they release me. When I release, when I was released, they did not give me everything. My properties, my phone, my programs, all my firearm in the in the trunk. That is a, a rifle, M1 carbine, 1944, with the trench mark and all beat up. That is, I kept that as a what we call collection item. And that one also they said like you know, I was there to threaten the guy and shoot him as a daytime. If I want to shoot, I'll shoot, I'll already shoot that guy. I'm not gonna call the cop and talk to you guys. But the cop, when they got something, they have to make up. But they got nothing to charge with me. The DA or the police said that. Unfortunately, they made up the documents. It came slowly, slowly nasty. So in April, I filed a complaint the, the, even the chief, New Age Gang at the Penal Police Department, the one who hired the Deputy Fire Force Report in Alameda County in 2014, and they hired him in 2018. Liars and liars. And he was like, okay, tr uh, intimidating me with what is uh, active investigation without my interview. They, don't, they did not even know anything. Three years investigation. Nothing, no arrest, no no charges, nothing. I, I was never contacted, but it was active investigation. And after I filed a complaint in April, the, the penal PD, they filed civil restraining order with a text message I sent. This That's what they said. I was sending threatening messages, death threats, to the penal police department, but, but I'm going to kill the Justin Roger, whatever. And that text message was made really good that even though I was at the, our local police department, I asked them, I asked the cop, it, you know, do you think it, it, it is a text message? He looked at, no, it's, it doesn't even look text message. 
because I was there to surrender my firearm. I got no choice. You know, they will come with the gang with me. So he doesn't even do text message. He said, why? Oh, oh, because, you know, the cop, the, this is the one I'm you know, turning in my firearm because they fire restraining order against me with this. Uh, the, you know, when those respond, it seems that the judge sounds, she, you know, she's not happy or he or she, they're not happy. And because this lawsuit did, the, it's called, it came through the magistrate. If there is no cause or there is, it's just going to waste the court time. They, they should dismiss the case at the beginning, but it went through after, you know, checking all the facts. So, motion file, this file, that file. And suddenly, the, you know, they put the hole on the case. I had an accident in November. End of November, December, whatever. Yeah, beginning of December. And both of my leg were fractured. And I was like dealing with a lot of things. And unfortunately, in March, we have a, lot, a little bit glitch in the family. And then, you know, I was like, you know what, this is done. I told my wife, you know, we, we better walk away. But since March, my account, was, my bank account was frozen because she just went there and screwed up, and that got a problem because I lost a lot of business deal that I was trying to make. You know, we already knew this thing, this shut down, and everything going to come, is coming. So before that, I have to get whatever I can to keep the family float, afloat. When at this critical time when it happened, when you lost everything you had. It's a disaster. You be mad. Because somebody negligent. You know, when, you're, when somebody gets mad, it takes about two, three days. At least you talk about, you know, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't know. No, there was no apology. I'm fine. Okay, that's what you want to file with or uh, divorce because, oh, I forgot I want my son's passport. It's too late. You screw up everything. Really, that's what I want to say. Fine. And we had argued three weeks, four weeks. I did not have any money for my food or whatever. I got nothing. She had everything. So, so I told her, okay, you want to split 50 50? Whatever right now, give me 50, half of it. I'm leaving. I will, I cannot deal with it. I'm going to leave. I will leave. She doesn't, she did not want to give me. She said, okay, you want to keep everything? You can keep everything. But you go. That's the best way. So I can go on with my life. Leave my child if you take everything. Go. I don't need the money. I want my child. Go. Otherwise, you want to keep the child, you can keep the child. Give me 50. Half. No, nope, she doesn't want to give it. Not clear what she wants. Make up her. No. So later on, you know, argument goes on because of the you know, I have uh, I have a pistol, brand new, never fired. It's still brand new in the box. Well, while ago and then I have the 1938 was in the gun. She was like, oh those are those belong to me too. I need to know how I said, okay how you know how we handle this. You don't have any experience. In case something happened, you'll be in trouble and says. So I was like, okay you want too much everything take it. It is your problem. Anything happen. You know you are recording right I told her anything happened I'm telling you on record I, it's not my problem. Whatever happened you deal with it. And she like, go on 27, 28. She was like, we got argument and she was on a 28. She went, as usual, in 2016 also, she took my child and she, you know, went back to uh, Asia. And she couldn't live there. After three months, the child was, the way they, they keep the child, he got asthma attack and you know, they had to fly back. At this time also, she, want, she wanted to leave, but the problem is all shut down. There is no flight in, flight out. Nothing. So she couldn't go to the hotel. She didn't know where to go. So she went to the community center to get a shelter. So got to the community center, they talked to the social worker. Whatever happened, she barely she speaks English, but it is horrible. A lot of people did not understand what she's talking and she was that they are I was like, oh crap. That what what happened now? I understood it. Social worker called the police as domestic violence. She left the house. We got argument. I told her, you want to leave, you leave. If not, I'll leave. Two choices. But she left. Took the money. Everything. Okay, go. Fine. But do not screw up. So 
especially the social worker did not even know. They called the police. The police just said, hey, we got the guy. This is the guy he filed a lawsuit. And this, his wife is here also. Both of them filed a lawsuit. And the child also here. Three of them, all of them together in our pocket now. What happened? Emergency protective order came up. Or oh, I was, I was in, I was like, what they call, torture the kid or something like, you know, like those physical violence on the child and the wife and endanger their life. And they had to leave. So that is currently make up, it is a politicizing, you know, the kid, the, my, the, our event. They are going to make it. I know of domestic violence, woman right and gun violence. Do not come up with that. The gun violence is at the police. They came to my house. Did not tell me I have protective order. They came like, can we talk to you? What? Oh, we have allegation like that. Can you come down to the station? When the police told you you come down to the station, they're at the door. What do you think? And I was like, okay, I'll come. How long it will take? An hour. They're not happy about it. They want me to go outside, open the door and walk outside. I said, I did not. I was just staying in the house. Okay, I'll come. It will take me about an hour and a half. Well, I have to shower, I have to clean up, you know, five minutes, I cannot get there. Oh, because you want to, I said, okay, I will take an hour and a half. I was, okay, nicely. Yeah, I'll come back, I'll talk to you, it's fine. And I still keep asking. And he came up, you know, can we look in the house for what? Do you have a warrant? No, no warrant? Sorry, you get a warrant that I can verify. Even the warrant verifiable warrant that I will call the magistrate to confirm what, what kind of statement they have. If it's true or not, because 99.9% .9 the police statement, they had all make up. And everybody believed that even though it doesn't make sense. They said police said that whatever, they didn't even, because it is, they said it is under perjury of penalty of perjury. Even though lies, when you say that, you know, under penalty of perjury, they consider as truth that they said in the federal court. So the cops are not happy, and then you know I went downstairs to check, and the garage door was open. Garage door was open, so I was like, okay, what are you guys? Oh, you know, I've been through divorce. I said, okay, really? Yeah. Oh, oh it's bad. Okay, I understand. Okay, so I'm gonna okay, bye bye. I'm gonna close the door. When I was going to close the door, the, the three cops four steps up in, dragged me out of my house. Slam me, everything goes on. No arrest warrant. No probable cause to arrest. California, uh, California law 841, penal code 841, the officer must inform the person who has arrested the cause of the arrest, the intention to arrest that they are going to put me under arrest. They have to notify me. Nothing. And put in the car. I was like, you guys, it is illegal arrest, go on the weather. And then the other guy came up. You know what, we'll give you like a uh, misdemeanor. I was like, screw it. There is nothing, there's no misdemeanor, nothing. Okay, your emergency protective or whatever, it is unlawful because there was no investigation. You came up one side because it's retaliation. I know that and uh, fight goes on. They tried to put me, you know, like, shut me up. Okay, that's it, don't touch me. It is lawful. When arrest is unlawful arrest, you have every right to defend. That is, in the already Supreme Court, everything decided is on the book. Now, they, they feel offended because they know they screw up. From, the, from my house, I said, I want my lawyer right now. I'm going to call my lawyer. Nope. They put my phone away. Nope, you cannot call. I said, I, I have the right to call because it's unlawful. No. Nope. Two already. When they did a lot of monkey business, and now, the police department filed restraining order the same way that the previous, the penal PD did, because they are right now form a task force kind of thing, you know, everything involved. And try to frame me out. Simple thing, separate the family. Now, somebody is involved in this case, the third party, which is someone, we all know who this uh, agency, law enforcement, and the child protective service everybody get involved and somebody filed the third party ex party ex party application for this uh, restraining order between uh, for my wife uh, you know, restraining me and they told my wife it is against the law if you contact him it is against the law because we are protecting you 
What are they protecting from? She went to the county because she looking. She's looking for. She was looking for shelter, and it became like that. And you know, they even get the key from her. My house key. That's what I have to find out. How did? Why did they take it? Why do they have the key? What did she tell? Whatever she said doesn't matter because it's there was no why nothing. I am dying to get my child now. What? The, the police are doing. It's simple. They want to get rid of me and later on they'll get rid of my wife. Put away. So the, their lawsuit is done. It is the nastiest thing you guys did. And the police came here and attacked him at, at my house. Whatever happened. You guys put me in. They said like, you know, assault with deadly weapon. Where was the assault with deadly weapon? You guys spent six hours at the hospital. Emergency room. And then went back. Another charges. The county jail record should too. Right? I saw with daddy with a domestic violence, whatever you guys name. When I, when the first case was uh, at the court, that I found out that uh, another one court record said probable cause for arrest is waived. There is no probable cause for arrest cannot waive because it, when they come up, emergency protective order or whatever, there was no arrest warrant. If it is serious domestic abuse or domestic violence, there will be arrest warrant. You guys got that. I'm not a child. Right? There's no exception. So I went to file a complaint at the police department and I told the cop, next time you guys want to abuse me like that again, I will not put up. I will fight. My right. Do not violate my right again. You guys, it's a lawful thing. I will fight back. Clearly I told them. I will defend myself. It's my right to for unlawful arrest. Oh, you don't have a gun. No, no. I said, okay, gun doesn't matter. I don't have a gun. So what? There's so many things I can defend myself. You know, I have hands, I have my, my legs, whatever. If there's a metal piece, you know, I am or a screwdriver, whatever. May 14th, I haven't seen my son since April 28th. May 14th, the judge already allowed that peaceful, you know, contact. Allowed. So, they did not let me, and then, you know, cannot. And at 14, I was the, the cops called me, you know, to get the statement and whatever. So I went there. Okay, I know you guys are gonna arrest me. I posted on you know Facebook Live and uh, I have my recordings. And those guys, they knew that. And they, they gave me a here gun violent restraining order. We already stopped you. I said what? Gun violent? I said okay. Now you can arrest me, right? No, we're not going to. I said you know what? If you guys gonna do a book, they came out. I said yeah, I know that this is gonna happen. You know what? Don't take me to jail. If you guys tell me I'm gonna take you to jail. At that time, you know what? I'm not gonna go alive. Open the door, then. and they said, "Oh no!" And they sent me to the psychiatric emergency with the notes. You know that they call fifty-one fifty means he's gonna harm somebody or he's gonna harm himself. So they put like seventy-two hours detention. But I got that the hospital. They look at what is wrong with this guy. Nothing. He's normal. Yeah, he's angry. Yes, we can tell. So. Four hours later, they let me go. I said, you know what, you can screw up big time. But they do not want lawsuit. They avoid it. They do not want lawsuit. That's why they said, you know what, you can go. We will get you a you know, taxi, whatever. They arrange everything for me. So, came home. I was like, and later I found out my cousin told me, I came, I was, I cannot go home. So my cousin told me, you know what, your wife came here to grab a lot of stuff. I said, okay, whatever she wants, take it. I don't care. So the cops, Told my wife, oh, he's in jail. You can go. I don't even. I didn't even sleep at home. Now I'm here making video. Once I'm done, once I post it, I'm gone. I'm not staying at home because it is not safe. I stay somewhere else. If I stay home, you know somebody might kick in the door and just get rid of me, and they'll say, you know, a home invasion. Nobody knew. You know, he was. Oh, he was killed at the home robbery, and. Go on, and now all the cases they put in the building. If this is right or this is fair, if the police department is doing the right thing, if I did the wrong, if I did commit any crime, I will turn it myself. Now they are building the gun violence and everything. What? Nobody has gun or what? The police do not have gun? No, they have it. It's second, you know, I would, don't even tell me Second Amendment right. It is fundamental right for everyone, everybody to defend themselves. I did not buy those.
they would shoot anybody. I didn't even go to the shooting range to shoot them. I just kept them because I liked the way it was built. I liked the look, nothing else. Mechanical. I'm interested in those mechanical things. That thing become, you know, I would just, if I can buy, I would buy a lot of stuff. And I, if I have a big warehouse, I'll hang them and just, I'll just look at them. That's the kind of addiction I have. It's not just that because I want to do something. If I am like somebody uh, trigger happy, it's different. So right now, I couldn't find any what we call lawyer or whoever to go against the police. And the county the, here, the, the courthouse is closed. You know, for claim, and I have to pay for the lawyer, and they will tell me take the plea bargain because you know, they are police. You cannot fight with them. So it's not going to happen. Here they are like. Uh, what they call rip up, uh, rip, rip, uh, representative or congress people or senator and everybody they are just like trying to win the election they will do a lot of marketing themselves but whatever come up with the police you file a complaint no we cannot do anything i'm sorry that's it i got a call from the child protective service is it going to interview me i said look i'm in pain i just got up last night and I want to call everything, you know, it's not a good time. Oh, you know, we can do that. I said, you know, conferencing. I said, you know what, you can do whatever. Interview, I said, you do whatever. You know, I am not in good shape. And they sent me like some kind of, you know, photos. Oh, do you have to work with firearm? What is the problem with firearms? I am, I have, everybody has the right to have. Nobody can tell someone you cannot have, you cannot have that. Seems that you know they are making the feminist movement or whatever, and, and the gun is going to be politicized. In this case, that's why they're coming from now. And the judge ordered that you know I was allowed to be able to contact and meet my son, peaceful, because there was no nothing, you know, not peaceful. So the day that I call and I, a few times I call and nothing happened. At 29, I had the court date, May 29. So I notified them. I want, you know, I am good. I have court date on this date. Please make sure my wife and my, my child is there. I want my child back on the date. I will talk to the court. Right away on 28, somebody, there's a third party, ex party application, applicant, filed a restraining order at the family court that I cannot meet my child. Is that isn't that something that is behind monkey business going on? 29, the police department for gun violence. I was like, are you guys kidding? You have SWAT and every kind of tank or like look, look at military, you know, like those things. And I was like, you know what? You guys telling me I'm violent. You guys are worried. You guys are fear for your life. And oh, I'm, you know, and that the, the judges approved that temporary restraining order. Is that possible? Is that a joke? I don't know. 